But there is no way. This is the United States of America. We're not giving up our sovereignty to anybody. Fuck that. We came too close. Now we're going back the other direction. We're not going to get calmer as years go by. We're going to get more fired up. We're going to want more. I want more. This culture war, you fucking idiots, is not, is not something about the just, oh, the next re-election. We want it all back. We want our schools back. We want our education. We want our higher education back. We want our banking back. We want our celebrity fucking entertainment industries back. We want our music back. We want our sports back. We're fighting for all of it. I won't stop until we have every fucking aspect of Americanism back and actually representing America. We're raising an entire generation of patriots right behind us who have the exact same attitude and thoughts and approach. We're raising children. You're aborting them, we're raising them. We're raising them to vote. We're raising them to recognize bullshit. We're training them to not trust the, the uh, government or the media. We're training them in weapons. We're training them in free speech. We're not a fucking thing the left can do about it. We're not going away. This is only the beginning. Globalism was a failed idea. That was the George Bush era Republican, rhino, sellout, scumbag, globalist approach to things. This is a new America. This is a new America that resembles the old America, except for with a lot more wisdom. And you're just going to have to get used to it, lefties. We're not going anywhere. And welcome back, folks, to Mutton Man here. Most of you know me as Silver City Stacker. I have a mixed bag for y'all tonight. So, I was watching a couple videos recently, and uh, as a newcomer to this amazing community, I figured I'd introduce myself and share my story. Wasn't sure how I was going to do it, but I started messing around with this uh, OBS software, and things just kind of started falling into place. Got a nice little fire here for you tonight. Yes, that's a live feed from my secondary camera. So, anyways, this is kind of a response to the uh, Tell Your Story Challenge videos. Something I was already planning on doing. I'll uh, also do some adding to the stack and review purchase number four. And I've also got a little something interesting to show off. Hopefully, maybe someone out there might be able to give me some information on it. This wasn't something I ever thought I'd do. Never had the urge to be a YouTuber. But, you know, when the Lord places something on your heart, you just kind of go with it. Before I begin, that intro. If you like what you saw and get into those kind of videos, this guy, Brendan Dilly, go check him out. I watch him every morning with a strong ass cup of coffee. The Dilly Show on YouTube, Periscope, Facebook, Clout Hub, maybe even D Live. This guy will definitely get you going in the morning. So, anyways, enough about him. I am a 40-year-old husband and father of one. My son turned 7 in January. And uh, being autistic, he's quite the handful, let me tell you. So if you hear random noises or screaming from the background on occasion, I probably recorded that during the day. I also have a couple of parakeets. They uh, like to squawk a lot, so you might hear them on occasion. I'll do my best to keep the background to a minimum, but uh, until I get a studio of my own or maybe some better microphones, I'll do the best I can. So I deliver pizzas. I only work a few hours a night, but I uh, get to tune into the live streams while I drive. That's pretty sweet. I don't get to chat a whole lot, so if I do miss your comments. That's probably what's going on. I'm not ignoring you. Um, well, it's not bad. It's, like I said, only a few hours a night. But if I pull decent tips, it's win-win. Especially if I win. Speaking of live streams and winning, I won a 10th ounce Silver Britannia on the Flying Twinkies stream. If you haven't been over there to the Flying Twinkie, go check him out. He's another amazing member of this wonderful family. And yes, I said family, because I do consider you guys family. 
We'll do a mail call prize feature video on that when it arrives. So I was saying I'm new here, new to stacking in general. I became interested in silver through a YouTuber that's been deleted in one of the recent purges. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Sean at SGT Report. He does political, financial, prepping, and other breaking news, interview style videos. Anyways, he was going on about silver and precious metals and was plugging his sponsor, SD Bullion. So I decided to hop over there and see what prices were like, and I was quite surprised I was actually able to afford this stuff. I tossed the idea around for a while after, you know, watching repeated videos about the silver price being at uh, record lows in March and April and how it was climbing back up steadily. I figured, you know, if it was hitting rock bottom, now might be a good time to jump in. I was mulling it over for a while, and well, then the riots started. Feeling like things were on the decline, and watching the Fed print money without regard, I kind of wondered if uh, the rumors of an economic reset may be true don't have any evidence to back it up for sure, but it sure does feel like the Fed's being bankrupted. I'm not a financial analyst. I don't know the details of how something like that would even work. But, uh, you know, things are definitely changing. But, uh, based on my observations and everything that was going on, I decided to take the plunge into precious metals. I haven't looked back. It's uh, definitely an interesting and fun hobby. It's fun to be able to buy stuff if you like to shop and purchase stuff like I do. It's fun to be able to browse the websites and buy stuff and then have it arrive, open your boxes and be all excited, and then put it in your safe and you didn't really spend any money. Whoa, I don't know what happened there. But, uh... So yeah, you've, you've still got the money in your safe. It didn't cost you anything to buy something. So it's like, you're, you're trading your fiat for silver, precious metal, gold, palladium. But you still retain your spending power. There for a while I was buying collectible Star Trek ships from the Eagle Moss website. Yes, I'm a, a Star Trek fan. Um, and I was spending like 40 bucks a month on these ships. My wife didn't understand it. But being a collector, I collect things, especially when they're a set. I want to have one of each of the set. Well, unfortunately that set is quite large. It's over a hundred ships. They may be even up over 200 now. I have no idea. But uh, I've got a bunch of them in a box. And they're just sitting. When coronavirus hit, I quit buying them. And uh, started going into a different mentality. Um, kind of prepping really. I got stuck on prepping. I realized that uh, I was ill-prepared. Um, when I noticed the run on TP was in full swing, it became apparent that uh, I didn't have what I needed. I didn't have enough of what I needed. So uh, I kind of started there picked up some supplies and some items, backpacks, knives, you know, just general survival gear. And then uh, I kind of moved into metals a little while later. I've always loved silver. My wedding band is silver. I've got two pieces of jewelry, bracelets, they're both silver. Honestly, I don't know how much constitutionals pass through my hands without me realizing. 
although since I have started paying attention, I have found a dime in my change. And uh, it turns out I had four more in a box somewhere that I'd forgotten about. I saved them because I knew they were different, but not exactly how or why, let alone what their value was. But as I learn from watching everyone, I become even more interested and go looking for more information. And it's, it's an enjoyable hobby. Like I said, you can spend and get, and you don't really spend, and you get the enjoyment of doing it. Um, I kind of moved on from SGT Report into some of the other videos that his guests were doing uh more monetary people and market analysts uh people like mike maloney silver bully and tv uh and eventually i found silver dragons and uh, another channel i won't mention as i haven't seen him in any of our streams but uh I honestly ended up unfollowing him as his content wasn't necessarily what I was looking for. I kept searching for more and more information about how and what kinds of silver to buy and eventually I came upon silver britches and stacking stormtrooper and uh, their info was a little bit better. Uh, it was mostly the presentation of the information that got me to stick around presentation is everything if your content is boring and I'm not saying mine's not because it could be and it's all a matter of perspection perspective but if your material is boring people aren't gonna stick around I get that and so I didn't stick around I didn't really find his videos to be that informational nor uh, that entertaining but uh, Stormtrooper and Silver Britches, they were, they were definitely more my speed. I liked their presentation and their information. And then I moved on to uh, Expat Stacker, Spectacular. <laughs> and then I found Mad Stacker. Oh, man. Life has not been the same since I entered the madhouse. <laughs> I stumbled into his stream and he was hunting rolls and I was like, uh, what's all this? And I was surprised to get a live response from him so fast and he said what was going on. He was hunting rolls and doing giveaways and this, that, and the other thing. So I stuck around. Well, I'm glad I did. I have met so many wonderful people in such a short amount of time. It's incredible. Alice in Silverland? Savvy Stacker, Keith Andres, Jonathan Reese, The Flying Twinkie, Ad Stacker, Tupac Coin Roll Hunter, everyone. I love the interaction, the generosity, the love. It's really nice to be in a large, tight-knit family with so much love. And by the way, if I didn't mention you, don't take it too personal. This is uh, off the top of my head. There's way too many of you to list, and it's like, seriously, oh wow, it's 4.20. It's 4.20 in the morning. <sighs> but, uh, I mean, I try to watch everyone's videos. I give everyone likes. I try to get that view time up, get those thumbs. And uh, I try to participate in the uh, live streams and the chats when I can. Like I said, even if I can't participate, I'm usually in there lurking, listening. Let's see, uh, what else? Um, I love President Trump. The man, the myth, the legend. I love our graceful First Lady Melania Trump. She's elegant and beautiful. I love patriotism and guns. I love the United States, I love my family, and I love God. So I guess that kind of wraps it up. Uh, there's my story and a little bit of background there. Hope you all enjoyed. 
that. Now, uh, I think we should check out some silver. Alrighty, I'll give you guys a couple of moments to uh, take in the scenery here. It's a nice little display I set up. Got my stack over here, my maples and my bars, the Colossus of Rhodes that I uh, did an unboxing on. I'll do a full detailed review on that at some point. And here we have the man, the myth, the legend himself on a white gold plated $100 bill. Not uh, a real bill. Not legal tender. But uh, that's pretty sweet. So uh, I'll flick over to the website here real quick and show you uh, what that was. I picked up the Donald Trump authentic white gold plated commemorative $100 banknote. And I did not pay $1.99 for it. And I did not pay $4.99 for it. I actually got it free with my order. It was their free gift at the time. Their little banner at the top claims that that is still the free gift, but upon adding something to my cart and double checking it, now they're offering a silver $100 bill. So <laughs> I think I'm going to have to order something to get that. So let's go ahead and take this back out. And we'll go ahead and look at some silver. Today's featured silver is, again, a Canadian 1.5 ounce super leaf style. This time in the wildlife collection, we have a polar bear. If we can get this thing to focus. Okay, so I'm having focusing issues. Let me pause this and... And we're back. So I had to uh, exit out and refocus my camera. So here we go. We've got the polar bear. And you can see, as I stated in my previous video, these have some pretty excessive milk spotting. Uh, come on, camera. Okay, so that bill in the background was stealing all the attention. Now we got some focus on the coin, and you can see that milk spotting. If this thing gets any milkier, that bear is going to be completely white. I guess that's fitting for a polar bear. So these are just the, uh, the single bear on the frozen wasteland of the tundra. Got the queen on the front, and uh, she's extra milky. Mmm, got milk. Yeah, check that out. As you can see, I'm handling these with my bare hands because, well, they're already pretty ugly. I don't think a little bit of fingerprinting on there is going to do much. Definitely see some scratching on her cheek there. They've seen some stack time. Again, fine silver. Four nines, one and a half ounces, Argent Pure, Canada. Written at the top. Slightly different design from the other ones. Got the year of minting on the front on this one. 2013, $8, Elizabeth II, and she is covered in white stuff. Ew, gross. Uh. There's another one. Again, a little bit of milk spotting on the front. I think that first one was the worst. A 
get a spotting back there on his rump. <laughs> Uh, yeah, not too much different than the other ones. Just uh, part of the wildlife series. Ooh, yeah, see that milk? These things are terrible. I mean, silver is silver, but... Ugh. This light really brings out the milk. It's not the best light for shooting, but, man, it's good light for looking at coins. I need to get myself a ring light. And a tripod, and a coin scope, and... Oh. <laughs> yeah. I need to get some coin stands. Some other various things. So, there's the, uh... There's the three I ordered to my stack on my fourth order. I'll bring up the invoice here real quick. You can see I got three of them. Spot price was $26.89. I ordered the random design. That's what I've ordered every time. Uh, I believe that's a lower premium than ordering the specific coin. So 49.03 each, bring in the total, subtotal of 147.09. Bought myself a tube to put them in, buck 86. And so 149.11 out the door for that. And that uh, brings the total stack weight at time of purchase and receival to this, which I believe that was 7, that brings 10 at 1.5, there's 15, 16, 17 ounces is what I was up to at the time of that purchase. This is brand new, so I'm not counting it. When I do the full review video, I will count it into the stack. Already showed this off, but I'll show it off again. It's my 24 karat gold plated, also from the same website I got the bill from. I've got some other stuff I'll show off at a later date. 24 karat gold plated, black enamel filled. I've seen a similar coin on another website, I believe it was $30, and they were claiming it was ruthenium and 24 karat gold. So, I figured if I'm not buying it for resale value, then I don't necessarily need it to be ruthenium. Black enamel's good enough. Flips like a foreign coin, that's uh, kind of odd for a U.S. based round. But uh, yeah, we got a little bit of colorization there on the shield. Red, white, and blue. These colors don't run. The presidential seal. And the man, the myth, the legend. Donald J. Trump. That's what I'm talking about. Give me more patriotism. Mainline that straight to the vein. Two, two, three. Lol. Found this in my car the other day. Regular old buffalo nickel. Pretty worn. It's almost a no date. That's why I need a coin scope. This camera is definitely not going to pick it up. 
but if you get in there and you look at it with a magnifying glass let's see if this will even work try this here for a minute you can barely make out what appears to be the remnants of a 38 just barely and it's also just barely got the demon mark so it's a 1938d probably pretty common I haven't actually looked into it too heavily last year of production but uh, yeah I didn't think I had any of those just found it laying out in my car here's the uh, five dimes I was talking about and this one here on the top it's actually kind of shiny and that's in pretty good shape Hardly any wear. Not much for scratches. The back looks good. Lots of detail. I mean, I'm not a coin grader, but that's probably in at least an MS condition. Well, like 67, 68. Still got some shine and luster to it it's not cartwheeling but shit it's 50 some years old but yeah I was uh, kind of surprised to see such a shiny barely worn if if at all Definitely out of someone's collection. Someone was saving this for a while. Surprised to find that. And these guys, still good shape. Not too heavily worn. Not nearly as shiny. Got some dirt. A little bit of tarnish going on. But still, as far as the wear goes, lots of detail. Still in good shape. The first one is a 64. That's a 64. This one's a 53. That lighting is terrible. Sorry, guys. 53 bit of a gouge there in front of his nose shout out to nosematics go check him out if you haven't he showcases some amazing coins sorry it's the easiest way to hold it but this is better for lighting the 53 what else do I have in here oh there's another 64 again fairly shiny not quite as shiny as the first one a little bit of dirt and tarnish but I mean they've all got really good detail this one's a little more worn really interesting coin is the one I'm going to show you after this. Here's a 54. A little bit of tarnish.
Gosh, there's something there on the flame. Kind of worn. That's a 54. So I got, uh, looks like three 64s, a 53, and a 54. A couple of more dimes to even out that half ounce. Yeah, I'm weird like that. Okay, so here's the the interesting one. You might maybe seen this down here in the corner. The beginning of the video might be wondering what it was. Bring this in here, and I may change the lighting so you can get a different look at this too, but I'm not sure if you can really tell in the lighting. I'll bring in the buffalo, I guess for now, for comparison. As you can see, it's not silver. Let's see if I can change this camera angle again here. Bring it down. Here's the two coins in question. We'll put them right there in the middle. And I'll bring in a brighter light. And look at that. You can clearly see the color difference. I have a nineteen fifty seven for comparison as the, that weirdo coin right there is a, a 1961. Probably won't be able to see it like this. Because Donald's back there stealing the show again. But yeah, kind of under the... Donald, stop it! Anyways, it's a 1961, if you can get in there and see that date. But it's, it's copper. Sorry, Donald. There we go. See, now, I thought at first when I pulled it out, it might just have like a patina on it because I had been going through my change and I had come across this and you can see it's got like a patina of some sort on it and it's pretty beat up it's only a 2002 so it's pretty new but it's got that discoloration on it so I kind of thought at first that's what might be going on here But upon further inspection, like seriously inspecting this thing, I, I can't find any evidence of nickel on it. This focus is really annoying. So, a 61 and a 57. One is clearly nickel-silver colored, and the other one is clearly copper. I haven't been able to find a whole lot of information about this mystery copper nickel. However, I did find a video 
talking about a rare black beauty, Jefferson Nickel, most of them from the late 50s, but all of them from the Philadelphia Mint. So I flipped her, and as you can clearly see, there is a D mint mark by my thumb. So, this is a Denver minted coin that appears to have been struck on a copper planchet. Now, I don't know for certain if that's what happened or if this coin was exposed to something that ate off the nickel coating or if that's even how coins work. Are they coated or are they a solid alloy mixture all the way through? See, I don't know enough about coins to know that. So if anyone does know that, maybe they could drop a comment in the section below and give me some information on what's up with this thing. It's all copper. And in the right light, you can kind of see a little bit of toning. I don't think I can get the right lighting. Right there at the edge of the building on the bottom both sides you can see just a tiny tiny bit of toning in the right light that might be a pit right there that dark spot in the window or it might just be some corrosion growing on the coin the date was definitely really corroded I had to take a toothbrush and some soap and water I didn't clean it, but I did wash it. I took some mild soap and water and a toothbrush to it and kind of tried to degunk it so I could actually look at the date with a magnifying glass because it was under a big blob of green, crusty corrosion. And so, yeah, here is my 1961 copper nickel that I found a couple of days ago in my change. Now I've heard of nickels being struck on pennies. Um, I've heard of improper annealing. I've heard of lamination errors. And this doesn't seem to be a lamination error. It could be improper annealing, or it could be that some copper planchets never actually got plated, and they made it through the mint anyways. Now, if they're not plated, I don't know. They must have just had some copper planchets get in there by accident. Now I guess the alternative would be that it could have been buried for a while, but it just it doesn't seem to exhibit any silver coloring. I know it's, it's nickel, not silver, but it doesn't exhibit any silver anywhere on it this thing looks like a penny but it's not <laughs> and let's see if I can get uh, let's see if I can get a reference coin here pre-60s penny throw in my bucket of pennies let's see what we got here hey 64 I mean, we've got the difference. I mean, it's a red. I've 
versus a brown. But it's not that. So what do you think, guys? Is this an error? Is this environmental damage? Do I have something cool? Or do I just have something that was stuck in the ground for a while? Or maybe someone put it in a glass of Coke and ate the nickel off. Let me know what you think, because honestly I'm not sure. It's not in the greatest shape. It's probably not worth anything if it is an error, or at least not worth much. But I uh, thought I'd, I'd show that off to you guys anyways, see what you, you think, if any of you have any ideas on what it could be, how it could have happened. If it's an actual error or if it's something else. All right, folks, it's uh, it's almost five o'clock. I think we're going to wrap this up. Pretty much out of content for the night, anyways. That was everything for this video. Just wanted to uh, show you the addition to the stack, show you my dimes and this weird nickel and my white gold hundred dollar bill all right guys it's been fun i hope you enjoyed listening to me ramble on for half an hour and uh we'll catch you guys on the flip side god bless <laughs>